Why don't more DACs decode SACD? Jerry in San Diego asks this really good question, because it is kind of confusing. And he writes, my surround system includes an Oppo universal disc player and a Yamaha receiver connected via HDMI. When playing an SACD, the Oppo can extract the DSD bitstream and pass that to the Yamaha receiver, which then decodes it and converts it to analog. If my Yamaha can do it, why don't we see high-end DACs with similar capabilities, as in DSD over HDMI? Uh, I, I can think of one audiophile DAC made by Bryston that can do this. Is there a reason the high-end industry isn't jumping on this bandwagon? Well, I, we get asked that question a lot because we make, we're, we're like the second, uh, I, I don't think it's just us. I think there's one or two other companies that also do it. I th uh, what's the uh, Scottish company that makes very expensive, uh, D DCM? No. <laughs> that Boy, that, now there's, there's something uh, uh, from the, uh, uh, that's something from the past. DCM, the, the, they, they made the, uh, the time window uh, loudspeakers, Bob Rappaport. Yeah, that was, that was good. But in, in any case, we make a transport that connected to our DAC decodes SACD in, in a high-end DAC, but most companies don't. So there's a very good reason for it. SACD, which is the Super Audio Compact Disc by Sony, uh, is, is a format that is still around, but not really supported by a lot of, of uh, publishers. It kind of kind of went fritz, and they really don't make that many SACDs. We, we have one, the, the one SACD, it's now out of print, uh, they're expensive to make and they, they have great sound. I mean, here you have a disc with true high resolution direct stream digital DSD uh, on, on the disc and there's a CD layer as well. So it all goes back to copyright. The ability of Sony to protect the artists from copying. So you have to put yourself back in Sony's position so many years ago. Way back when, when they first came out with SACD, which they hoped would be the next step up from CD, because at, you know we, we had vinyl and then we, the publishers got to reissue all their libraries again as uh, CDs, then they wanted to do it again, and this time they're going to do it as SACDs. And the reason they did that is because well, there's a lot of economic reasons. Uh, it, it, they would love to have their catalog sold to you three times, four or five, you know, whatever. But uh, this was a chance to actually get a copy right off the master tape, not uh, with these high resolution masters downsampled into CD or even, you know, and compressed into vinyl. Now you have a chance, especially on a digital uh, master, to get as close to the master tape as you ever could. And they knew from CD's ability to be copied over and over and over without any degradation, a problem that didn't exist with cassettes and, and, and uh, vinyl records, they knew that the only way they're going to get these publishing houses, these producers, to agree to let people have digital copies of the master tape well, that was a pretty big deal, and if they're going to do that, Sony had to guarantee that they couldn't be copied. So every SACD has an individual hard-to-break key. It's 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 a uh, everyone's a complete has its own security number on it, and you have to have a system authorized by Sony to break that code. Now Sony makes a processor that is completely built in. It outputs analog. It can input HDMI and, and the encrypted signal from the SACD, and that's the key word, encrypted signal from the SACD is easily passed through HDMI. But it's not something we can, co we can copy it, but you can't listen to it because you can't decode it without that key. That key is located inside of a Sony-made chip, which has a DAC and isn't all that great. It's not anywhere near as good sounding as something like we make with a like a high-end DAC. 
not just ours, but any number of high-end DACs sounds considerably better than the Sony-built DAC and encryption-breaking device that they sell, right? So we, we could buy that and send it over, but it would sound like a Sony. And Sony makes some excellent stuff. They do. But most of their consumer audio stuff isn't up to the standards that high-end people like us would, would want. So what we did is we came up with a scheme, and everybody has sort of their own, the, the few that are doing this. We came up with a way that past de the, the, uh, our player decrypts it because it has that Sony chip, but then we grab it before it goes into analog, and we send it over HDMI, but it's an HDMI cable using our proprietary I2S format, and it has to handshake with our DAC. So we know that the, our DAC, um, which is converting it now to analog and you can hear it, is the only thing connected to that raw, unprotected data stream. And in that way, we protect and honor Sony's copyright laws, which if we didn't, would A, be an injustice to the musicians, because we don't want to allow copying, because that's just not right. Uh, and it would get us in trouble legally. So that's why. And you'll see fewer and fewer of them as time goes on. But that's, that's the truth behind it. Great question. Thank you. Talk to you tomorrow.